Welcome to the Return on Lifestyle podcast with Ray Descalzo from Pravada Wealth Management. In this podcast, we help you overcome financial worries and make sense of planning, investing, insurance, and banking. Join us for this journey as Ray draws from his expertise and interviews brilliant minds to help you enjoy life. The best is yet to come. Hello and welcome to Return on Lifestyle with Ray Descalzo from Pravada Wealth Management. Today we're talking about power spending. I can, I'm just imagining a credit card with a pull handle with a small engine attached to it and just really getting in there and buying stuff. But that sounds like a terrible idea. Good morning, Ray. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well, Eric. Thanks for having me once again. Yeah, this is this is your podcast, baby. This is good stuff. I love it every time. Power spending it brings a lot of imagery to mind. I think you know, and this is this is going to date me, and, and probably you'll probably agree with this, or maybe you'll just deny that you've even heard of this show. But you ever heard of the Flintstones? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I used to love the Flintstones. You bet. Yeah. So, so um, I just I was just flashing through my mind. Uh, Wilma and Betty, they would get. Fred's credit card and they would, they would have that music in the background dun, 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 and they'd both yell, charge it. <laughs> I remember they, that. And as a kid, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know what that meant. I mean, I, what, why <laughs> right. is this a thing? What is that? I have no concept. <laughs> you know, I remember like, apparently that's something you could do, but I couldn't, yeah, I didn't yeah. understand how it worked. So yeah. Yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I think of now that, now that you said power spending and, uh, but I don't think that's what we're talking about. What are we talking about today? Well, you know, maybe I should call it empowered spending. Oh, you know, nice. it's a little bit of a play on words. And where, where it comes from is there was a while back ago where a, a large bank had an advertising campaign. And their advertising campaign was supposed to be funny and cute. But ultimately, it was like your bank was text messaging you. Hey, bank, why is my uh, account so low? And the mm -hmm. bank would text back and say, well, maybe you should walk instead of taking a cab and and make mm. coffee at home instead of, uh, you know, going to a coffee shop. And they did that and it really backfired. A lot of oh, folks no. on Twitter, yeah, and social medias and the socials, they said, hey, you, you are poor shaming people, you know, and you don't know our pain, you know, what it's like. And, you know, to their point, we've got, we've had, you know, 30, 40 years of wage stagnation, mm -hmm, consumer price mm -hmm. increasing. So we can assign actual economic terms and numbers to what people feel. And so the Twitter users really piled on. And I mean, everybody from just like Joe string shoe, you know, shoe string budget millennial to uh, democratic presidential hopeful Elizabeth Warren, you know, she even like, Hey, how dare you trivialize the struggles of everyday Americans saying, you know, stop having a latte and, and you'll be fine. And, <laughs> and I, I kind of, you know, oh man, yeah, I'm I kind of see where they're coming from, you know, the social justice warrior, so I got to thinking about it, you know, as they were, everybody was getting mad at each other about this ad campaign, you know, frivolous spending is bad, but being this victim, you know, of the economy and, oh, you know, the, the haves and the have nots, that whole, that whole, you know, identifying yourself as powerless, which is what a lot of the Twitter, Twitter warriors were doing, but those, this is two bad things. We're just taking, uh, we're taking a bad thing, frivolous spending, and the solution isn't there. And so I, I kind of came up with this concept of, you know, when we spend, that's a powerful thing to do. And, and if it's the case, then we have to be mindful of that power, intentional about that power. And so I came up with this uh, term, power spending. And, you know, I always like little terms because it helps me remember. Mm -hmm, it's almost mm -hmm. kind of like it brands it in your mind if you yeah. think of a capital P and a capital S. And so I've got some thoughts on power spending. And it's something that um, I want to share with you guys today. All right, let's discuss them. Where do we start? You bet. Well, you know, there's the ABCs of power spending. There's there's attitude, behavior, and then community. So we'll start off with attitude. And there's a couple of different things we can talk about. I'm going to cover some high points. Uh, there's a blog on my uh, on my website that will kind of flesh it out a bit. So today's podcast will be more practical in nature. And the blog will be more detailed in nature and kind of give you an overarching thing with less practicality, probably. So having both in the back pocket is probably not a bad idea. So first, let's talk about attitude. And the attitude that I think that I want to really talk about is, is being mindful. And being mindful, you know, what I would compare it to is every now and then you'll notice your, you'll notice your electricity bill goes up, you know. Or mm -hmm. one time I noticed that my, uh, my water bill, like, skyrocketed. And long story short, what happened was, is every morning at like 9 a.m., you know, when I'm not there, no one's really, no one's really paying attention. My pool 
filter would come on and it would shoot water out of a pipe somewhere. And by the way, I know nothing about how pools work. I mean, even to this day, <laughs> I am just completely worthless. You know, I'm, I'm not mindful about pools and that's not a good thing. I'm not bragging about that, but it was shooting water out of a pipe, you know, to the tune of like three or four gallons of water for no reason other than something was broken mm -hmm. and nobody knew what it was. Well, what ends up happening is, and we figured out what it was, and actually the story worked out really well from a financial standpoint because the guy came over to look for a leak and he said, well, here's your problem. And we fixed it on the spot and they didn't charge me anything. So that was a nice. huge win. Yeah. And nice, it taught yeah. me, hey, you know what, Ray, be mindful of how stuff around your house works and quit being so ignorant. But anyways, the point of my story is, is we've all, uh, our budget can oftentimes leak money, mm -hmm. much like a pipe, you know, in the attic dripping quietly. Money is evaporating and we can't quite put our finger on it. So one of the things we have to do, the attitude we have to have is be mindful, be that crime scene investigator and figure out where did that five bucks go? You know, mm -hmm. where am I leaking money? And I can give you story after story. One of my favorites is um, I, there was a, a station for a long time ago that had sporting events and it was uh, $20 a month to have this station. I, I subscribed to it because I wanted to see the sporting event. And then the sporting event lost the contract with that station, which I was aware of, but I forgot that I was paying extra on my cable bill. So mm -hmm. that was almost 12 months ago. And then I got my, uh, my cable bill and, you know, typically it's within a range and I say, okay, it's in that range. I'm not going to take a look at it. But then I've gotten to the habit of being mindful. So I look at my cable bill and I see, oh, I'm paying 20 bucks for XYZ station, which has no value to me at all. So I gave him a call and, you know, it was a five minute phone call. I should say it's a five minute conversation. Uh, I think I may have been on hold for 30 minutes, but that's a cable company. Of course. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, the, but the attitude is being, is being mindful. And I think that's key. And so budgeting is really about um, mindfulness, you know, and mm -hmm. being in intentionality. It's not perfection. It's not about, oh, I said I was going to spend 10 bucks on my utility bill and it's 11. I failed at budget. No, that's not really what it is. It's mindfulness and keeping track and having that attitude of, of diligence. The other thing, though, too, I would say as far as attitude goes is be grateful. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. You're out there in Nebraska. I'm here in Orlando. What would you say is a, a, a traditional... Thanksgiving meal at your household? Oh, well, it's, uh, my wife is Hispanic, so I've got a, oh, a wow. mixture, but definitely we, we like to have the turkey and, um, depending on what kind of time we have beforehand, if I can, you know, how much I'm able to help her, uh, she likes to make some homemade tamales as well oh, to, nice. as kind of a side, but we have turkey stuffing gravy. I mean, the, the, the traditional, what you would call Americana, if you will. Yeah. And then we throw in some of the the, the uh, Hispanic traditions from her side of the family as well, um, just for fun, because we just love food, period. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's it. You know, I'm yeah. not a light guy, bro. I, mean, <laughs> I understood. Well, it's funny yeah. because before we pressed record, we were talking about pizza and mm -hmm. I haven't eaten lunch. It's, you know, it's, it's high noon here in central Florida. So I, uh, it's just funny. This, this reverted back to food pretty quickly. Very you quickly. Know, yeah. Before and after be a we, theme. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, uh, maybe a problem for both of us we need to talk about. But anyways, um, you know, talk about turkey and cranberry. All right. When you go to get pizza, for instance, turkey and cranberry aren't like the top number one pizza toppings. Not right? usually on the list. Yeah. No, not yeah. usually on the list. So well, the thing I would say is, is I would say that, you know, turkey and stuffing and cranberries, all good, you know, but it's not great. The reason that Thanksgiving meal, now tamales, that's a whole other story. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. But the reason that um, we enjoy our Thanksgiving meal is because really the attitude that surrounds it. It's that gratitude. Absolutely. The reason that those, that food is so great is because we are grateful. And I think one of the things about spending and, and budgeting really is the same way. You know, this is an amazing time to be alive. It's never been easier to live like a king on a commoner's income. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, King Henry the whatever, it took him 400 people to run his life, you know, because he didn't want to lift a finger. And I think perhaps you and I have forgotten and perhaps our listeners have forgotten that it was only, you know, 40, 50 years ago, you would have to get up off the couch to change a channel like some kind of savage, you know? Exactly. Right. <laughs> and, and we have just, come to, uh, you know, for me at least, we've taken it for granted. So when you make those purchases, a powerful thing to do, be mindful, but a powerful thing to do is to say thank you, to be like, wow. There was funny, there's a financial blogger who said, I ordered 
scissors off of Amazon for dollar and fifty cents, and they were delivered to me on the same day. Now he lives in New York, you know, so naturally it's a little bit easier. Mm-hmm. But he says, "What kind of an amazing world do we live in?" You yeah. know. And when I saw that, I thought, boy, that is, that gratitude is so powerful. It changes everything. You know, it changes everything. So I would say that um, be mindful, be grateful, and have that uh, type of an attitude is one of the first steps of power spending. Mm-hmm. And so that's a, uh, a very important thing. And then we can kind of go on to the next thing, which would be different behaviors that you can do. And the number one behavior, and there's several we can talk about, but the number one behavior that I think is super duper important is, you know, budgeting is really just another word of saying prioritizing. Mm -hmm. And when you prioritize your expenditures, I would recommend that you prioritize charity, saving, and investing. Okay. And the reason for that is, is a couple different reasons why, but the way I like to explain it, there's a, there's a law called Parkinson's law. Okay. And and actually this podcast is a great example. You know, you, you and I were talking and said, Hey, we want our podcast to go from 22 to 28 minutes. Right. And what's ironic is that I, I just tend to blab and fill the time. You know, in other words, if you told me I had five minutes for this podcast, I would fill that time. That's, mm-hmm. par- that's mm-hmm. Parkinson's law. If you give a task a certain amount of time, that work will expand to fill the time. I don't know who came up with it other than Mr. Parkinson or what his, uh, where that comes from, but it's really a cool, cool fact yeah, of life. That's interesting. You know, give yourself a deadline, you'll meet the deadline. Don't give yourself a deadline and you'll just kind of whatever. Well, when it comes to spending, Okay. Your priorities of, you know, Maslow's lower hierarchy of needs. Think about, you know, food and shelter and clothing. You know, those things, if you don't put a lid on them, will expand to take your whole budget. You know, you you Mm -hmm. will spend every dime on the nicest house, the nicest car, the nicest clothes, and the nicest food. However, if you put saving, uh, saving, investing, and charity, they live on your spreadsheet, that balance sheet or that budget, you know, spreadsheet. They don't make a peep, you yeah. know, and, and because of that, there's an old version of you who lives in the future who would like that money, that, that say that, that person who, who is need the investments. There's also Murphy's law. Okay. Where things go bad. So that's where mm-hmm. saving is important for, for, uh, emergencies, but Murphy, you know, those emergencies are in the future. They're not going to talk to you. And then charity, you know, the, there's only so much your pastor can pound the pulpit and say you need to you know tithe and there's just so much that those uh, sad videos on on t- on commercials you know for kids mm-hmm. that are starving somewhere they they're not loud enough so you have to prioritize it because they will not get your attention so prioritize when you budget i say that budgeting is prioritize savings investments and charity mm-hmm. and then just live off the rest you know yeah. because at the end of the day that's really what it's about it's about putting the important, non-urgent, non-fire alarm type spend expenditures on your list. And then your budget, your life rather, will kind of, uh, kind of a Parkinson's, Parkinson's law of finance, your life will make the rest of it work. And mm-hmm. I, I know that sounds simplistic, but if you think of it that way, I think you will. I think you'll find that budgeting is actually very simple. And and I will say one caveat, obviously, your utility bill and, and, you know, doesn't know about your budget spreadsheet. So your air condition will break. And that's $7,000 you weren't planning on, you know. Mm-hmm. But if you've had the savings and you've been putting away for Murphy's Law, then those surprises actually, you know, really, you can take them with a, you know, as a bump in the road versus a major, major issue. So that's a, a huge behavior that I think I want to I wanna promote to yeah. everybody. Um, another one I would say, uh, you know, we are, we are, capitalism is a, is an adversarial pursuit. Okay. And we talked a little bit about consumerism in a, in a previous podcast and was one of our first ones actually. Yeah. That was a great one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and because of that, because of consumerism and because of, uh, uh, advertising impulse buying is a big deal. Okay. So I think, uh, and we won't spend too much time on, all of the nitty gritty details, because, you know, you can find so many cool, I'll call them hacks, you know, budget hacks, lifestyle hacks, where, where you can find ways of making a dollar go so far. And there's some really insane stories of what people have been able to accomplish on limited budgets. But let me give you some things that I want you to consider. Uh, First of all, stick to the list. You know, when you go shopping, we'll just use grocery shopping, but this could be your car, this could be a house, this could be Lists are huge in combating emotion, okay? 
Um, so when you go shopping, and let's talk about groceries here real quick. One of my weaknesses, if you will, is I am a big fan of red meat. Mm-hmm. I, I like it. It's good. Makes me feel strong. Absolutely. So if I'm going to do that, I got to figure out, okay, I'm going to buy this. I'm going to make it a priority. I put it on my list and then take some time and think about it. And what I have found is I have found that when you make a list for your grocery shopping, and this is, again, we can, you can apply this list making thing anywhere. Once you realize this is the thing that I'm going to need, I'm going to be able to find the, the highest, best use of my dollar. And for me right now, not an endorsement, I don't get any kickbacks from Costco, but I have found that Costco steaks are just superior to the supermarket steaks, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say ribeye, for instance, that's a big deal when you go and buy a ribeye. No, we're talking about power spending. We're talking about, hey, I want to intentionally buy a ribeye. This isn't an impulse. So I found out that Costco steaks are $9.99. And it, on a good day at, at my supermarket, they're, I think, fourteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. So what's interesting, though, too, is, is they are far superior. So when you go to do your grocery shopping, and, and this happened to me this weekend, I didn't plan. For Father's Day, I got a new grill. So I thought to myself, you know what? I need to I need to get some steaks. <sighs> Couldn't get all the way over to Costco. I go and I buy the $15 steak. The, the grocery list and the hacking thing, had I been on top of it, I would have said, you know what? I'm going to make this whole thing planned out. And you save yourself so much money over time. And everybody, you know, when I tell people stories like that, they're like, wow, five bucks, big deal. Well, don't think of it as five bucks. Think about it in percentages. What if you had 30% more dollars at the end of the month, right? 15 versus 10. And, and that's the way you need to look at it is that you can actually get 30% more life out of mm-hmm. your money. And when you see that, um, grocery lists are great for hacking because you'll all of a sudden start finding those deals and you'll start finding the things that you constantly uh, love to eat, love to have around the house, and you can do a great job with it. One other thing I'll say is when it comes to when it comes to grocery shopping, um, pre-made food, we'll put it this way, I did a little price check. A head of lettuce is a buck twenty nine, right? And shredded lettuce is three dollars and ninety cents. Mm-hmm. Now, Eric, I didn't do the math on that. What's the difference between a dollar twenty nine and three ninety? Oh, at least a couple bucks, at least. Yeah, a couple. It, yeah. So, what are you buying? You're really buying time. A, a plastic bag. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 Yeah, that's a good point. You're buying a plastic bag, and you're buying a little bit of that time that you saved. And you have to ask yourself: Is it worth twice the amount of money? Almost four times the amount of money. I'm sorry. Almost uh, uh, two times. I'm sorry, three times the amount of money mm-hmm. to to have that. And that's the the problem with pre-made food. You know, if you get prepped food, it is essentially the same as you eating out, maybe slightly cheaper. And one thing I will say about eating out, whenever I talk to couples about budgeting and about putting money away for savings, and I ask them, well, where do you think money's leaking? And I use the the analogy of, of if there's a pipe in your attic leaking, you know, what's that leaking pipe for your budget? 100% of the time people say, you know, well, it could be this, could be that. You know what it is, though? It's eating out, you know. And so mm-hmm. eating out just kind of, it's great. Don't get me wrong. I'm addicted to eating out. I love it. It's a hobby. It's something that we intentionally do, but it can get away from us. And I would say, though, even more so, be careful when you are buying convenience of any kind. You know, when you're buying that thing that you think is going to save you a minute, it's costing you quite a bit of, of money. And that money was probably something you traded for time or talent, or sweat, or effort. So yeah. that's that's key. Um, one other thing that I've picked up, and it depends on who you are. You know, if you're listening to this and you're a retiree, this may or may not apply to you. If you're in working life and so forth, it, it may apply more. But what I've noticed is, is that, you know, people like Steve Jobs and Warren Buffett and Mark Zuckerberg, you know, these are rich, successful people. I don't know if you've noticed, but they all seem to have a look. In other words, they all seem to kind of wear a uniform. Mm. Does that make sense? Yep. And and I find it's funny because it's a sort of a rich man, poor man. You know, if you're very, very wealthy, you, like Steve Jobs, tend to wear jeans and a black turtleneck back when he was with us. <laughs> you know, Warren Buffett always seems to be wearing a suit and tie. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, it's usually uh, jeans and a, and a black T-shirt or, or a hoodie sometimes. Mm-hmm. So these are the wealthiest people that have ever walked the earth. And then you take a guy who's, you know, working a job, his first job uh, flipping burgers at the at the burger place. He's wearing a uniform as well. Well, 
I would say that perhaps we could learn from from those wealthy folks because what ends up happening is is I don't know about you, but uh, all of us who are listening here, we all have a body that looks a certain way, and that certain way is going to look good in certain outfits, right? So if that's the case, you figure out what you look good in, and then you hack it. In other words, you figure, okay, this is what my look is going to be with a little bit of variation. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it does three things. According to the high pro highly productive people and the very wealthy people, what it does is it creates one less decision you have to make. And you don't have to be strict. Steve Jobs was a little crazy about it. You know, I mean, he looked exactly the same all the time. <laughs> you know, I would go more for Bill Gates. You know, Bill Gates, he has a little bit of variety and so forth. And, mm -hmm. and you can decide how much you want to do. For me, you know, when it comes to my work day, right, I tend to go for the color blue and I tend to go for no tie and I tend to go for a blue blazer and then I can, I can, you know, get to a point where I know exactly what I'm going to be able to wear and everything kind of matches. The reason that's a big deal is because if we keep chasing the latest and greatest fashion, okay, then what we're really doing, that's where, that's where the rat race and that's where the attitude of keeping up with the Joneses can kind of eat into our pocketbook. And ultimately, my concern would be is if you can get that down to, down to a science of what you're doing. Now, don't grant it. You go to the beach. You know, you can't wear your your blue blazer. You know, you go to a funeral, you might have to have some other things. But having a uniform and having a thing that you go to as your go-to can help you spend intentionally and can also take the time out of um, spending. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, people like my wife who are rolling their eyes listening to this saying, no, not going to happen. But do it mm -hmm. as much as you can. And I think you'll be surprised at how much time and more importantly, how much uh, how much money you can save. Yeah, fantastic. Another thing too, I'll, I'll say another big way people spend money and, and can do it more intentionally is, is travel. I would highly recommend you look for online deals and that's mm -hmm. probably not a big news flash, but you know, several years ago I went to Ireland. We flew to Ireland, did like a big, we rented a car, all part of a package, all part mm -hmm. of a package deal, the tickets to get there, the rental car, a night stay in three or four cities in Ireland and a couple tours the whole thing cost about 3000 bucks and mm. we were ecstatic. So you would think, well, that was, you know, probably 2012. So this was a good seven, eight years ago. You would think, well, $3,000 probably prices have gone up. So I went to that same website and I looked for a similar trip. And, and wouldn't you know it, a very similar trip, maybe better depending on, on your opinion, cost $2,200. So... Mm. What's happening is it's an amazing time to be alive, but if you'll get savvy, you can really have some big trips for a price that seems to be going down. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would say on power spending is uh, it depends where you are. You know, I'm in, I'm in the central Florida area, so this is sort of a, a mecca for, for people coming to us. And wherever you are, there's probably things that you can do, but consider also staycations. Staycations are just as fun. You still get a change of view, even though you may be in the same zip code or at least the same area code anyways. And uh, it's a great way for, for spending some funds and, and uh, for saving some money, but also getting the biggest bang for your buck. Now, having said all this, the reality of it is, is there is a hundred and thousand different hacks when it comes to different behaviors that you can do. And going online and learning more about those is just a, a ton of fun and something that you can do and implement and, and you're, you're spending money. So it's, it's actually something you have to do and you can make it a game. And yeah. then finally, I would say what's important about power spending is community. And so this just happened. This example just happened yesterday. Went to a kid's party on a Sunday afternoon, about three o'clock. And there were just, you know, tons of screaming kids at one of these, like, you know, like these little gyms that you go to and they have the kids running around. And I showed up with my wife and my daughter and some friends of ours showed up and the husband showed up as well. I'm like, Hey, how you doing, man? And so he and I got to talking. And as we were talking, I, I mentioned to him, uh, we should, I, I said, he, I know what it was. He said to me, he said, I said, you know, what are you doing here? I, you know, not many fathers want to come to a birthday party. And he said, well, he said, I kind of, you know, I got a job done at the house and it really, you know, I thought I want to spend some time with my kids because I got this job done. I said, what was mm -hmm. the job? And he had replaced a bunch of fire alarms in his house. And he went on to recount his woes of all these appliances breaking and all the mm -hmm. research he had done on buying new appliances. And we had about a 45 minute conversation. It went from appliances to electronics and mm -hmm. then finally ended up on shoes. 
And I tell you what, this guy, he had learned so much about what was a ripoff and what were, what was worth every penny. And I had him go over a proposal that someone gave me for a TV and speaker system. I said, what do you think about this? And he gave me advice. He said, hey, that's pretty good advice. That's a pretty fair price. I had no clue. And my point is, is when it comes to power spending, surround yourself with smart people Mm -hmm. who are passionate about something. doesn't even matter what, because you can learn so much by just listening to those around you who've gone through it before, you know? Yeah. My favorite quote, I think, from Ralph, Ralph Waldo Emerson, he says, you know, in my walks, every man I meet is my superior in some way. And in mm-hmm. that, I learn from him. Yeah. Yeah. That's super, fantastic. Super cool. Super cool. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting you know, with you, Eric, sometimes after we're done recording or before we're recording, we'll be chit-chatting it up, doing, you know, level tests. And you'll say, oh, hey, look what I found out. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I learn something new every day. Well, when it comes to advice on how best to spend your money, hey, your financial advisor's got some great ideas. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, but so does everybody else. You yeah. know, there are so much to be learned. Uh, and that can be in person. It can be online. And then I guess another thing I would add to as far as the community part is sort of the the the, the other part would be unfriend the Joneses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Delist point. the rats. And I think you know what you mean, you know, the keeping up with the Joneses. Yep. The rats, of course, would be the the rat race. And unfortunately, I think if you're listening to this, you know who I'm talking about. There's someone in your life, there are people um, in your life that are status conscious and they love to kind of signal their success through outward displays. And too often, this can create like this arms race, you know, where everybody's trying to outdo each other. And it, it happens, unfortunately. And, and we got to stop the madness. And so you got two choices. You can either cut them out of your life or you can let them know that I'm so happy for you, but I will not be participating, you know, in that particular rat race. And I would even say maybe, maybe you could be a good influence on them without, if you can do it without falling for the temptation, um, you know, maybe you can be an example of, of being empowered, you know, and that's what power spending is. It's saying I'm, I'm doing this intentionally and it's what I want to do. And plus, then you can also borrow their boat because they're still your friend. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? There you, go. You, don't have to, <laughs> you don't have to buy the boat. You just yeah. keep them as your friends and say, hey, by the way, thank you, but no thank you. Yeah. And it's funny. We went out for dinner on Monday night with some friends. And in our neighborhood, there's some people I don't know very well. But my mutual, our friends are friends with them. And they say their house is absolutely gorgeous. And it's, you know, they've done so much work on the on the backyard and the front yard and and my friend was speaking about these people who are the Joneses of our neighborhood. And he just rolled his eyes and he says, yeah, they really like to flaunt it. And mm. I, I didn't know that, you know, because I don't know these, these folks. And the reality of it is, is if you keep up with the Joneses, the Joneses aren't going to like you anymore and you mm-hmm. aren't going to like yourself. So let's, yeah. let's just say enough with that madness. I agree. And then, yeah, yeah. So power spending is a, uh, just a really an, a, an approach and attitude of saying, look, let's, uh, Let's not be victims to the economy. Let's not act like we don't have some kind of agency in all of this. And let's take uh, let's take it back. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've got two stories real quick. If you would indulge me, Ray. Yeah. So I, I love the point number one about kind of combining number six and and uh, which is the travel. That was your sixth point. Talking about travel and then also talking about prioritizing, you know, and and budgeting and so on and so forth. My wife and I are celebrating our twenty fifth wedding anniversary this year, and we're taking a trip to Mexico. Nice. Uh, in, in September, we've never done an all-inclusive resort. It was, that's high on our priority list. We're actually going to be going with three other couples. It was one of the other couple's ideas. And we thought, well, this will be a nice way to, to celebrate our anniversary as well. So we're going to do that. And then we've prioritized that, right? That, that's part of our budget. We, we started about a year ago making sure that we could do this. And it goes right back to your story about having a pool. I've got a nice in-ground pool in my backyard. And we had budgeted to have the pool open this summer. And uh, I added for those that are in colder climates, you have to leave about the pool about half full all year round because it'll freeze because we have winter up here as opposed Uh-oh. to Florida. <clears throat> so I'm not jealous or anything, right. uh, but we, we keep about half full. And so then, which is a good way to look at life, right? Half full. Uh, so we have to fill that up at, at the beginning of the season. And so my pool is a 40,000 gallon pool. So it, it's a little more than half full because I have a deep end. So, I would say there's about 25, between 25 and 30,000 gallons in it. And then I have to fill it up to the, to, to the top point. So I did that. And then I took the cover off about a 
two weeks later, and it was back at the level it was when I closed it down. Oh, no. So that's a bad thing. So I lost about 15,000 gallons of water somewhere. And sure enough, there's a, uh, the, the liner between the liner and the siding of the pool, it's begun to separate. There's something wrong, right? Well, that's not in the budget. Repairing that and then doing it. So the budget I had was for opening the pool and running the pool for the summer. And I may not be able to open my pool this year because wow. I don't have that in the budget to repair it. In, if it's, if it's going to be expensive, I have no idea. I've got a guy coming to take a look at it. If it's going to be expensive, I'm going to have to repair it, but probably not open. I'll probably be using the, the pool budget for that because I'm not going to dip into other things. Like I've got an emergency fund, right? But having a pool isn't an emergency, <laughs> right? right? As much as I'd like to call it one, it's not. Yeah. And I'm not going to take away from my wife and I's 25th wedding anniversary vacation uh, because that's that's a priority. That's above the pool. So you, you do have to make these decisions. And and I think it's kind of funny that, you know, the the whole shaming thing that you were talking about early on that the, the Twitter went nuts and, and I'm sorry, but a latte isn't a priority when you right. have to do other things. This isn't poor shaming that I don't buy lattes out because they're five fifty six seven bucks. You know, if I want a mm -hmm. triple shot, it's going to cost me six or seven bucks. I don't, I don't do that because I don't want to spend that money. I prioritize to spend that money someplace else. Right. So there's that. So I, I agree a hundred percent. But all of us have to make those decisions, right? I mean, that's that's the point. We all have to just prioritize what do we want to do because we can't do everything, right? Unless right. unless we magically get a Powerball ticket that's going to give us a half a billion dollars, we're still not going to be able to buy everything we want. But it's it's just it's it's all about priority. And then I want to talk about the travel thing just real quick because, like you said, y'all know somebody that knows a little bit more than you about something. And I'm going to clue Ray in on something. I'm not going to say the name of the app because I don't want to endorse the app. But I will tell Ray off air. I'm going to tell Ray after we're done with this podcast. So he has the information. If you're interested in, in what I'm about to say, call Ray, right? Call Ray. Oh, he'll, he'll, nice. He'll I have like the that, app. Man. He'll have the name of the app. But uh, my wife and I have been mulling this around because we want to do a little bit more traveling. That's part of our budgeting. That's going to be part of our prioritizing to be able to spend more time together. We're empty nesters, bro, right? This is, this is a prime time to be able to have those honeymoons that we couldn't afford when we were 20 and got married. So right. <laughs> this is right. the time. So just as a, a teaser, uh, how about a week long castle retreat in Italy with flights? So basically this app has all sorts of good deals and they're all vetted out and they're all packages. So international flights, a car rental, seven nights accommodation at a four star resort in Italy. You ready for the price? Drum roll, please. <laughs> That's the worst drum roll ever. Six ninety nine per person. Wow. <laughs> It's ridiculous. insane, insane, $6.99 per person. So for a total of roughly $1,400, obviously there's taxes and things for $1,400. That is that, that's, I mean, that's a trip doesn't even make people sense. to Italy. It doesn't make sense. Oh, and it includes breakfast and dinner every day and free parking for that car that they, they let you rent for the full eight days. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you, and, and this is the, you know, when you hear this, this one's probably gone by the time you get the app. So don't get excited, but they have 20 deals all the time that they're, they're putting together these packages. So always look for those deals, whether it's travel, whether it's shopping, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, even, even medical, I would encourage you to shop around for some oh, medical things point. too. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's always something better out there. If you just want to do a little bit of the research or like Ray said, Talk to your friends that maybe have gone through something that you haven't before home repairs and things where they know here's where you can get some good deals on tools or here's some, you know, here's some good deals on materials because somebody has been through it before you guaranteed. So thanks for indulging me, Ray. I appreciate it. No, that's great, man. I'm, I'm actually, uh, can't wait for the first time I can say this. I can't wait for this podcast to end <laughs> so that I can find out what you're talking about. All right. Well, well, thank you, Ray, for the time. This was great content and, uh, I look forward to the next podcast. Likewise, sir. All right. And thank you all for listening to the Return on Lifestyle podcast with Ray Descalso. If you have not subscribed to the podcast yet, that's bananas. You, you should uh, click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Ray comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thanks for listening today. For everyone at Provada Wealth Management, this is Eric Johnson reminding you to live your best day every day. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Return on Lifestyle podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available.
The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Pravada Wealth Management. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider for any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. The following program is sponsored by Pravada Wealth Management which is solely responsible for its content. Advisory services offered through J.W. Cole Advisors Incorporated. Securities offered through J.W. Cole Financial Incorporated. Member IFNRA, SIPC. Pravada Wealth Management is an unaffiliated entity from J.W. Cole Advisors and J.W. Cole Financial. The opinions expressed by Ray Descalso should not be construed as specific investment legal or tax advice. All economic and performance information is historical and not indicative of future results. Investing may involve the risk of loss of principal. Any tax advice on this show is not intended to be used by any person for the purpose of avoiding U.S. federal or state tax penalties that may be imposed on such person, and each listener should seek advice from their tax advisor or legal counsel on topics that arise from the show. Nothing should be construed as solicitation of an offer to buy securities. The preceding program is sponsored by Pravada Wealth Management, which is solely responsible for its content.